performance and performance driving. I'm Reg Local. An exciting day today. It's new car day. Although to be fair, it isn't actually new car day. I've had this about three and a half, four weeks, something like that. Uh, and to be honest, to me, shame. I haven't used it very much over those few weeks. Um, mostly because of the Christmas holidays and we've been away. Uh, the poor thing's been sat on the drive for the last uh, few weeks. So it's a nice day today. Thought I'd come out, give it a bit of a run. Bring the cameras out with me, introduce you to the new car so you can see what I'm going to be making the videos in over the next well, couple of years at least. Probably a few years if Mrs. Local's watching. So the M135i is no more. And um, a little bit sad really to see the M135i go. It was a really good car. A proper performance hatchback, hot hatch if you want to call it that, but with a, a sort of BMW edge to it, rear wheel drive, six cylinder turbocharged engine, three litre, and it had plenty of performance, 320 brake horsepower in a little hatchback. You've seen some of the videos where we go up on holiday up to Scotland or some of the other videos that I made in that car. They went to the Nürburgring in it and went up and down the Autobahn at top speed. Uh, you'll know just how much performance that car's got. But its time was up and BMW gave me a ring and... This is local, said I could get a new car. So here it is. It's a BMW M2 competition. something so to understand where the BMW M2 competition sits within the sort of M range if you like there's four, four sort of steps on the M Sport ladder or motorsport ladder if you like they start with the M Sport cars like the M135i which have been breezed on by the motorsports division Then you get the full fat M cars, of which the previous M2 uh, was one, the M3, the M4, M5, M6. And above that is the competition versions, which are a sort of facelift update, slightly harder edged version. And at the top of the tree sits the, the CS versions of the M cars. Now I've driven quite a lot of M cars. I'm quite lucky really. I do driver coaching at weekends and um, I'm lucky enough to get to drive and ride out in quite a lot of different cars. So I've spent quite a lot of time in M3s, M4s of various types. You just have this ability to make a a car that's that's very usable on the road. People talk about how good they are on track, but let's face it, 99.9% .9 of the time you drive these cars, it's on the road. And BMW have this ability to make a car. It's a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde, really. You can pot around in these cars, and it's it's, it's the same for most M cars, really. You can pot around in them all day long. And they never really reveal themselves to you when you're just doing the normal daily grind. But open up the taps, drop it a couple of gears, start using those revs. Very quickly, M cars become a different proposition altogether. Genuine high performance cars. So BMW made quite a lot of changes to the M2 when they brought out the competition version. Uh, it's been out about 12, 18 months, something like that, this car. The original M2 I suppose it was a bit a bit more like my M135i. It had basically the same engine, the N55 engine. Um, it was based on the 
2 Series Coupe, so probably a slightly stiffer chassis. And I really like the original M2. It had a really nice feel about it. Um, it was very much like the M135i, but everything turned up to 11. So a bit more power, a bit more brakes, a firmer brake pedal, firmer suspension. It rolled less than the M135i. But actually, if you jump straight from the M135i into the M2, the original M2, you'd feel very much at home. They were very similar cars to drive. But with this latest version of the M2, the competition, BMW have made some really significant changes, starting with that engine. So the N55 engine, three litre single turbo engine, uh, has gone. I understand it's because it couldn't come up to the most recent emission standards. So understandably BMW had to get rid of that engine. What they have done is replaced it with the S55 engine, which is the engine that sits in the current model M3 and M4. Now I've driven quite a few M3s and M4s with this engine in it, and it's a very, very different engine. It's a twin turbo, three litre straight six, and the N3 M4 it's putting out, I don't know, 440, 450 brake horsepower as standard. And I've always thought in the M3 M4, this engine is a bit of an animal. It has a very racy edge to it. In this car, however, it, it feels like it's been softened off a little bit, and that's not a complaint. It's got a slightly softer edge to it, so in the M2 competition it's putting out about 410 brake horsepower and a significant increase over the 365 brake horsepower of the original M2 and about 406 pounds foot of torque. So it sounds to me like BMW didn't quite want to bring it up to the level of the M3 M4. Maybe 30 brake horsepower down on, on the engine in those cars but the changes they've made to it have just softened its edge a little bit. Now part of that may be because this model has to have a, a gasoline particulate filter, which is the latest emissions technology. That might have softened it off a little bit, I don't know. But when I say soft, I only mean a little bit. The engine in this car is pretty epic, to be honest. But I have to say that the changes that they've made um, to this car go way beyond just bunging the M3 engine in it. Uh, this car's still in its running in period, so for the first 1200 miles you've got to sort of limit the revs a little bit. I'm trying to keep it to the, the safe side of 5000 revs. But this engine revs to 7600 once it's fully run in and it's had the running in service at 1200 miles. So I'm taking it easy at the moment but really you only have to drive this car a couple of hundred yards to realize straight away that this is a very different car from the original M2 uh, and significantly different from the M135i. Steering feel to start with uh, and the directness of the steering. So this is a shorter car obviously from the M3 M4 um, but years and years ago I used to have an E36 M3 Evo and actually, if you look at the dimensions, that car and this car are within millimetres of each other, so you can see how much bigger across the range cars have got. My well, one complaint about that E36 M3 that I had was it was a bit wooden, a bit dead around the steering. The M135 that I had had a much better steering response, but still just a little bit vague, shall we say. The other issue with the, the M135i was that the damping wasn't very good. Uh, the sort of vertical damping on the rear axle in particular got a bit bouncy at times. If you hit a corner, uh, if you hit a bump mid corner, the car didn't like that. You had to work quite hard to keep it on a, on a good path. This car has been really stiffened. So it's got, um, yeah, it's got a carbon fibre strut brace under the bonnet, that's the most obvious change. But it feels to me like it's had some significant changes to the suspension components. It's on passive dampers, so there's only one setting. 
you don't need to faff about changing it from comfort to sport with the dampers or anything like that um, but it rides really nicely it's firm but I quite like a car that rides reasonably firm but it certainly isn't crashy over bumps it's got a typical BMW build quality to it so even when you are going over bumps or potholes or whatever there's nothing squeaking and rattling in the car and that will go over a manhole cover then there's nothing squeaking and rattling but going back to the steering this car just feels so much more planted it feels accurate there's a real connection between the steering wheel and the steering wheels if that makes sense And that's true both in sort of sweeping open bends and where you've got changes of direction. It really wants to change direction, this car. Much more so than the M135i and definitely more so than the previous M2. And for me, that shorter wheelbase, that, that, that more chuckable nature of the car makes it... I'm going to dare to say it. It's got a nicer feel than the M3, M4. Certainly on British roads. British roads like the ones that we're going on today up into the Yorkshire Dales. I prefer the size of this car. I prefer the fact that it's a bit more wieldy. And easier to drive on British uh, B roads, back roads. Uh, there's some talk about rose jointing in the rear suspension now if you look on the internet there's varying different um, opinions about this some of the early press reports said that they put some rose jointing in the rear suspension which is uh, metal bushing if you like rather than rubber bushing uh, and there are other opinions around the internet that say no actually we, well, I've had a good look at the suspension there's no rose jointing there um, something is different however on this car um, that damping issue that I talked about before with the M135 and to a lesser degree the M2, that's gone. This car is totally planted at the rear end. It's not bouncing around. Doesn't feel unwieldy. It doesn't feel like it wants to get out of, uh, out of control at any point. It's a very, very stable rear end on this car. One thing you might have noticed is the gearbox. Yes, I've bought a DCT. So if you saw my video uh, a few weeks ago where I borrowed Mark's uh, M4, gave you a demonstration as to how to use the DCT gearbox, I was reminded just how good this gearbox is. Now, I'm not a late adopter to this gearbox. I have to say I'm a very early adopter, to, especially to BMW's uh, semi-automatic transmission. The E36 M3 that I had years ago uh, actually had the original mark one version of bmw's smg gearbox the sequential manual gearbox now that gearbox was yeah a very early version of sequential manual transmissions came out so the mid to late 90s 96 97 it's a single clutch transmission it was basically just the ordinary six speed manual transmission uh, with an automated function no clutch pedal Um, it had an automatic function which to be quite honest was horrible but the manual gear changes I actually quite liked it there were no paddles on the steering wheel like this car it just had a gear lever down here that you move backwards and forwards and all the time I owned that car I only ever used it in manual mode just changing gear uh, a lot of people said oh the gear changes too slow it's a bit clunky for me it suited my style of driving um, and actually it rev matched nicely and the software was okay up until the point where the gearbox became borked and cost me £1,000 to fix uh, shortly after which that car had to go which was a shame it was a really good car it was a proper M3 um, but I couldn't afford to keep fixing it this gearbox is two to three generations ahead of that this is a totally different proposition um, I'm not going to go into how you use the, D, uh, the the double clutch transmission because I've already done a video on that. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but I, when I made that video, I was reminded just how good this gearbox is. 
um, and I am so far really enjoying using this gearbox. Um, the surprising thing for me is how good it is in auto because when I gave that demonstration in Mark's car I tended to use it most of the time. I only had the car for a short time. He was, yeah, he was very gracious lending me the car and letting me use it for a few hours to make the video um, but I wanted to get the most out of it so I wanted to show you how to use that gearbox properly and using it in manual mode seemed to be the thing to do. Um, in this car obviously I've done quite a lot of pottering about in it um, and I have to say the automatic mode is really good for that. A thousand times better than that original SMG gearbox. Um, it's actually quite intuitive, um, it will hold gears for a little bit longer. The default setting in this car is uh, just an efficient setting, so you get in started up and it's an efficient setting and it, uh, it's just in auto. And if you're just pottering about, commuting, going to the shops, quite a nice way to use the car. However, when you get to a road like this, which opens up into a national speed limit, we can get onto the M1 and M2 buttons, these pre-programmable buttons, which were mentioned in the previous video. And for these sort of weather conditions, I've got M1 set with Sport Plus on the engine, uh, sort of medium gear change speed, and Sport on the steering, which seems to suit the car. So let's take a lower gear. Let's start moving the car along a little bit. Nothing silly. The weather looks like it's just taking a change for the worse. Not bad. The roads are damp. And of course we're still running the car in. But let's give it a roll. Let's talk about those chassis changes. And the way that it makes the car feel. You can see I'm just making very small inputs to the steering wheel. But the other thing to mention with this car that I haven't brought up yet is it's got an electronically controlled limited slip differential. So that was the, the, the other thing that was really lacking in the M135i was a limited slip diff. So you'd find that if a, a wheel became unloaded in a corner because you're leaning on it, you know, you're leaning on the car, then a lot of the power tended to go to the unloaded wheel. Um, whereas in this car, the electronics are working with the differential and it gives you a really nice push out of the corners. Out of tight corners, it reminds you that you're there. So if you're turning out of a junction, it's very easy to spin the rear axle up, even just at half throttle. So you've got to be very careful, especially in the wet. Now, once the roads are drying a little bit, this rear axle really works nicely together with the gearbox and the changes to the chassis. And if there's one word that stands out to me that sort of shouts at me when I drive this car, it's there in the front of my mind all the time, it's accurate. The car is easy to place, it's accurate. All right, it still doesn't quite steer like a Lotus or a Porsche, but it's a huge step closer to that sort of accuracy. And it feels all of a one, it feels like every, every part of the car feels like it's been designed in conjunction with the rest of it. You know, they really haven't just chucked an M3 engine in this, there's been a significant redesign to all the important parts of the car, it feels a lot better, a lot more controllable. overtake really drop the car into third gear and it just squirts past other vehicles like that so my favorite technique as you already know is to get the gas on early in a corner get the car balanced right from the start of the corner and this car loves it that's how it's been designed to be driven the settled rear end on the way into the car into the corner. Take that 
that technique into corners like this, take a lower gear, squeeze the gas, it really comes alive on you. There's a mid-corner bump. Now in the M135 that would have really unsettled the car, in this one no problem at all. Feel those mid-corner bumps there, look how stable the steering is. The car isn't fighting me at all. mentioned the M1 and M2 buttons, those pre-programmable buttons on the steering wheel. So there's a number of parameters you can uh, change in this car. First is the throttle response. Got three levels, it's got a sort of what used to be called comfort in the M135i and this is called efficient. That's the default position when you switch the car on. Well, I have to say it's pretty quick and responsive actually, even in that efficient setting. Then it's got a sport setting and a sport plus setting. In the sport plus setting it opens some valves up in the exhaust, makes the exhaust a little bit more fruity, a little bit more pop and bang when you lift off the gas, but not ridiculously so. And the next setting you've got is the gear change speed. If you look at the marketing bump from BMW, they will tell you that this button here little squares on it allows you to change the ferocity of the gear change. That's just nonsense wording, it's the speed of the gear change. You've got three different settings. In the slowest setting it just slows the gear change a little bit, smooths it out, it's quite a nice setting, it's the default setting when you switch the car on. Um, at the moment in M my M1 setting is in the second. Um, and then the M2 setting that I've got, I've got it up into the fastest gear change uh, setting. I'd sort of reserve that for dry roads. You can do full throttle gear change, you don't need to lift off, but uh, that introduces a little bit of shunt to the rear axle in the fastest setting. So I like to keep it dialed down uh, when the roads are damp like this, uh, at least to the second setting, so the mid-range setting. And the other parameter you can set for the uh, M buttons is the steering weight. Uh, and I tend to just stick with the middle setting. Just stick with the sport setting. Um, artificially weighting the steering to me feels a little bit unnecessary, a little bit false. Um, Although it is quite nice actually to have that additional weight when you're on the motorway actually, the least sporty driving that we do. Smooths out your lane changes a little bit, but um, for me I sort of keep it in a mid setting. And I've got the car in M1 setting now, so let's go and have a drive on a little favourite stretch of road of mine. I've got it in the M1 setting now, which is ideal, I think, for sort of damp roads in January in the UK. Austin. But the other setting that you've got for the M1 buttons is your stability control, traction control setting. And this car has a, a sort of new setting, or new to me anyway, MDM. I can't quite remember what MDM stands for, but it basically dials down the traction control quite a few degrees. It allows some slip at the rear end but it keeps a little bit of a safety net there to catch you as well. So you could just move the rear end around a little bit. Again, I'll reserve that for dry roads. Really want the rear end or the rear axle moving around too much today. On these slightly damp Yorkshire Dales roads. So let's have a little run on a favourite stretch of road of mine. This is Horton in Ribblesdale through to Ribblehead. I've got the car in M1, so the throttle response is at its maximum. Traction control is in its normal setting, steering is on a sort of sport setting and the gear change is in the mid range. Two out of three.
gonna head down there I can see a car in the lay-by on the offside with his headlights on and then we've got a bit of dead ground here just holding third gear through here balancing the car on the gas looking into the distance now you can see the road going round to the right and then to the left I know that car's on the offside position to the offside of the road here just move away from it a little bit there's loads of warnings for this right-hander so many people have got this wrong in the past look at the signs where there's more paint there's more problems so slow it right down you can see why there's flowers near the wall and all sorts there people have got it badly wrong on that corner because they haven't paid attention to the signage so a little bit of rain coming down not too much take a little bit of an offside position here balancing the car on the gas now it's a nice quick road this but it's not a flyer it's not one you really want to attack not in these weather conditions there's a lot of blind corners always got to imagine what might be around the next corner and as you come into cell side again loads of warning signs what are they warning us about? I'm slowing it right down here. Down into third. The advisory speed limit for cell side is 30. I think that's too high. You wouldn't want to rush into here. But then again, we're not here for long. As soon as you're into this village, you're out of it. through the corner across the top of the walls a little squeeze on the gas now as the road opens up coming out onto a nice straight now in a minute bit of local knowledge let's take the fourth gear there's a vehicle park down there on the near side I'm not sure if it's the speed camera or not not that I'll be breaking any speed limits today, but let's be careful. I think it's just a car with its boot on. Doing a good impression of a speed camera. There's some lads going caving. Not my hobby, thanks. So up ahead now, look at this right hand. The limit point is where the walls intersect, and you can see it's moving already. So I'm going to take third gear, squeeze the gas on approach, keep the car balanced. Very good squeeze on the gas down here. Oh, this car really picks its feet up when you open it up. knowledge here this is where the three peaks walk joins the main road for about a mile or so I don't imagine there's many people doing the three peaks walk today it's early January there's not that much daylight um, but I'll, again I'll look out for pedestrians in the road on this next little section so even when you're not revving the nuts off at this thing it really does you know that 406 pounds foot of torque really does just roll along nicely in the higher gears, fourth, fourth and fifth gear this car on a road like this, really does maintain a very very quick pace, stay third into there, let's straighten this one as long as that Audi doesn't move. today I think. So that's it for this video, quick introduction to the M2 competition. It's only a first impressions video really but as far as I'm concerned first impressions are good. Um, this is quite a car to be honest, I'm going to really enjoy the next few years driving this car. I'm going to 
and share some of that experience with you on the on the channel so if you've enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe getting close to 5,000 subscribers now so give us a lift let's get those subscribers up to 5,000 I'm going to have a look at the website as well, reglocal.com. Loads more information there about advanced and performance driving. Some information there about how you can come and have a day's driver coaching with me as well. Come and drive your own car up on these roads. With a little bit of coaching input from me. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.